para o Senhor. Eu saúdo a amada igreja com a paz de Jesus. Amém. Aqueles também que nos The ones that are following us online, also, I greet with the peace of the Lord. I invite the church to stand. We're going to be reading the Word of God in the second book of Kings, chapter 4, verse 38. Second Kings, chapter 4, verse 38. Amen. The Lord has revealed that today He want to bring salvation among us. Renew of the joy of salvation to some, for perhaps some have lost that feeling. So it's time to reconcile with the Lord. The Word of God says as follows. And Elisha returned to Gil Gilgal, and there was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, Put the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild guards and came and sliced them into the pot of stew. Thought they did not know what they were, though they did not know what they were. Then they served in to the man to eat. Now it happened. As they were eating the stew, they cried out, said, Men of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. So he said, Bring me flour. And he put it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. The church may be seated. The, the, the group will be singing a song.
glorificado seja o nome do Senhor. Blessed be the name of the name of the Lord. Today we we went to eight uh, household paying a visit and pray for the the people for the families. The Lord has poured out several blessings so this week as well in total we made like 11 12 visits i'll try to be brief as the lord has visited us deeply during the songs the text that we read talks about about the contamination, it's like a food intoxication. I start talking about the youth because in our days, it's very easy for us to entertain ourselves with words. In our days, it's very easy at our hands in a cell phone Practically, there is good things and bad things. If you want to pay for things will get to your door in hours, then that easy way that the world offers, technology, the modernity, then my distant man from God. Sometimes the mankind takes away and suddenly they don't know where they are now. Sometimes the man get lost inside himself and all of a sudden he don't know his origins, who he is and he, he has no knowledge about himself and about what God has to him. This episode we just read, we see that some of them went out to bring the vegetables needed for this stew. So the prophet came to this place, a place that there was no proper food, it was a famine. So he approached to the people, the people were hungry, and He said, I need to do something to bring food for these people. So then he, he asked to them to prepare the pan, the fire, the pot. And when they went to, one of them went to the field and they, he might have been too far and he, see, he faced a wild guards. And translating, it's a venom, it's a plant that causes intoxication. So he took this, this venom uh, vegetable, so he, he brought a full hand of it, and they threw in the pan, in the pot, and this food was like now, into, uh, intoxicating food. So the man of the prophet, tried and they noticed that they would get sick there was death in the pot and probably all of them will end their lives right there through the food poison so the prophet says Bring me flour, prophet says to the one of them. So he threw the flour. So maybe it was too, too light, right? So with the flour, it will be a little thicker. But what happened there was a miracle. The flour came and the venom went out. 
and the, for the glory of God. When we bring this message, this little passage of the Bible for our lives, we see that there's no difference. I start to talk about the youth because they were not on the cell phone all the time. They were not at the beach. There's nothing wrong with the beach, but they could be anywhere. And they were not. They were at the disposal of the Holy Spirit, not to be tempted, not to be in risk spiritually. And they were where the Lord has called them to be, at the feet of the Savior. And the Lord make a miracle. And when we are in the presence of the Lord, we see miracles happening. Because the man sometimes, mankind, leaves, deviate from the way, looking for something that he, they even don't know what it is. And they found poison. Something they're going to take them to destruction. The sin might take the whole heart, the soul, and there is nothing that can resolve this situation in our human perception. And the Word of God mentioned that the prophet. He asked for something. Looking at the passage, we see a scenario that is prophetic. It's beautiful. We see a prophet. It talks about the Father, God, the Father. We see here the fire that is used to hit the pot. It talks about the Holy Spirit. And we have the pen, our hearts. And many times we let the sin in. And when the sin get in, got in, there's only one to bring solution that can resolve the problem, the flower. In the Gospel of John, what does the flower do? You can make bread with it, right? So let's see what John talks about. I am the bread of life. Your parents have eaten the bread, the, the manna in the desert, they died. Here, Jesus, the bread that came from heaven, so whatever eat from them, never died. I am the living bread bringing from heaven. Whoever eats from this bread will live eternally. There was a prophetic plan from the part of the Lord, a salvation plan for my life and to your life. No matter how far you are from the Lord, no matter how much you have contaminated with the, the poison, Jesus came to this world and he died on a, on a cross at the Calvary. And he went to the, to the grave. But at the third day, he rose again. And he conquered death. In my life's favor, in favor of your life. The flower that came to the pot is the death of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice. It, it went into your life, into your heart, so you can live, so you don't die. To have life and abundant life. This is what the Lord wants. That you can live. God does not have a death plan for your life. Maybe you have walked so away. And the Lord is inviting you to come back. You still have time. Jesus didn't come back yet. We don't know when he's coming back. But even though if it takes 10 more years ahead... You can be taken, harvested by the Lord. And if, if that happened, what have you prepared? 
your plans, your work, your savings, will you take it with you? No. Nope. But if you have worked for your salvation, if you accepted Jesus as your only and Savior, you are property of Him. Even though that you die for this world, you will live forever. It's not my promise. It's the promise of our God. It's the one that never lies. The one that takes care of His church. The church was together. God has a plan for the church. God has a plan for every and each one of us. Never walk alone. Never, never leave the flock. Bible says uh, that whoever separates themselves, it has a big risk of dying. This is the place that the Lord wants you to be in the body, because the Lord will pick up, will bring, will rescue, will rapture one body, the church, the bride, and His project is for the body. And he wants you to be part of his plan. You know why? The price was paid. When you notice, the prophet didn't ask anything. Did he ask for something else? He asked for one thing only, flour. He could ask for salt and the other seasoning to mix with it. But it brought one, one thing only. Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only way that takes man to the salvation. There's no other option. There's no alternative. Jesus is the only way to take man to salvation. If to accept Jesus, you are saved. If you do not accept, you are already condemned. This word is for us to meditate upon. How are we spending our time? as servants of the Lord. The word servant. So this, how, how we invest in our time in the kingdom of God. So is what we spend in time are making us distant from the Lord or, or closer to Him. This technology, this easiness, it's bringing us closer to the Lord or not. The Lord has shown some gifts for tonight's service, and I would like to share. The Lord has shown uh, a man. Uh, he was in his little boat. We're going to transmit it, the vision and land. Then we will discern it. So this man came in a little boat. And during the service, he received the visitation of the Holy Spirit with fire. So the Holy Spirit never ceased to work. He understood that he needed to leave this little boat that he was using for very long. And tonight was the day of his definition. And it was seen that at the end of the service, he understood clearly And an angel from God who invited him to leave this little boat, to abandon this little boat, and to head towards a big ship, like a cruise ship. And he was ready, anchored, waiting for him. So he, the invitation was for him to, and the church was there, aboard. So as he board to this ship, the church rejoiced for the decision, for his position. The little boat talks about ourselves individually, our own resources, the things that we think that is a good support. A little boat on, on the sea, if there is a big wave, what happened? It will capsize. But what the, the, the man when the man put his understanding his life at risk 
his, his thoughts at stake. He doesn't let God guide him. But tonight, it will be different for you. You're going to listen to the voice of the Lord. The, the gift says you wanted to do this tonight. You want to take this decision to enter in this ship, which is the work of the Holy Spirit. Wonderful project that is about to departure. And God is inviting you. It's about to leave. The church is leaving. Jesus did not come, but it's very at hand soon. And before he comes, you need to be there. Prepare to departure. So I really hope that through this gift, God has spoken to your heart. As for today is day of salvation. He was alone. He was by himself. So we discussed this before the service and we noticed that he being alone by himself, the church is the body of Christ. So be part of it. Come and live with the Lord eternally. The Lord has shown in another gift, another man. He received a a food supply that made bad for his system. And every time he eats, he felt sick. And every time he eats this food, he got sick. Constantly. And he keeps eating this bad food. Tonight, an angel of the Lord was sent with a garment of doctors. And the role of those angel doctors were to visit this man and to make a detox in his intestines. All the poison food that was inside his system it was to be removed. And during the service, the Lord did this job. He removed all the poison food, any residue of this bad food and the Lord said to him throw everything away because it's making harm so we don't die it sounds heavy right there is an alert very directed something that you have participating that it's making bad for you and you know why it's causing bad feeling because God has a plan for your life and the Holy Spirit is testifying in your soul and in your heart that is making bad for your system whatever you are watching or eating or putting at your service and you participating partaking this is something that is spiritually a poison food food poison for you. This will kill you if you don't stop. But there is a solution. Let's change it. There was a deal. Deliver whatever is causing bad to you before God's thrown. And the Lord is giving you the real food. He's going to reveal to yourself as the real bread that comes from heaven. He will give you salvation. We talk about salvation every day. We talk about it. Because the church talks about to be saved, salvation. That is uh, that is our role. Paul says, I'll never get tired to say you the same thing because it's life for you. The Holy Spirit is saying, come. And the church is saying, come. Jesus Christ is at door. It's, it's at hand. You still have time to understand to leave everything behind, the things of this world, and to feed yourself with the real bread, you still have time for you to repent, to regret, and to turn to God. Let's sing a song. Let's sing the same song again. We still have time. If it's something that is distancing you from the Lord, put before the Lord now. 
God has bread and life for you. He don't have any poison, any food poison. Nothing bad to your system. But oh, whatever comes from Him is good. It's the opposite. It cleans your system and takes away all the bad. Children, your God speaking with you at this time. As your God says, I can see every and each one of you. To all of you, I have received the prayers, glorifications, and the praise of my church. It's being put before me and I receive as a incense, perfect incense. Tonight, I have spoken in special to one of my chosen, my children, my son. My eyes is watching you, wherever you go. I have searched and sometimes even with your, inside your house, with the lo doors locked, I have seen you to give you the direction to my presence. I will never give up on you. I will never give up on you. You are a chosen one and I love your life. 
And when you return to your home, great things I'll make into your life. You will return to my presence strongly. I have chosen you so you can be serving me. This is my covenant with you so we can live. So my Holy Spirit can guide and direct your life. And to one of my daughters, I know your heart and that situation that you put before me, I have been working on the victory. In three weeks, you will see, you'll be rejoice, uh, re rejoicing for the blessing in my presence because the victory will be in your hands. My beloved church, glorify the name of your God as for I have come down from my eternity to visit your hearts through my Holy Spirit. And I want to fill you with my Holy Spirit <laughs> to testify about my power and my name in your life. I live with you, my peace and my joy, says your God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is our God. Let's have one word of praise to the Lord. We glorify you, O Lord, as your Holy Spirit has visited us. You allow us to reach your, your presence, to leave all our daily tasks, to be here tonight. And the blessing that you have brought to our souls, it's incomparable. You are the flower, you are the bread, you are the blood. One day your son has died on a cross, giving us the right for the eternal life. Great, great, our gratitude to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church will stand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to present this service before the throne of the Lord. exactly what the Lord has shown us. Lord God, we glorify your name. We want to bless you for the manifestation of your Holy Spirit among us tonight. Bringing blessings to your hearts. Certainly, we will not live in the same way that we came. We will live loving you even more as for we know that you have plans of salvation for our lives. And we know that we walk with victory in our hands because you have granted us that. Given that when your son died on the cross to die for us, receive these moments of worship, our gratitude and praises, and take us in peace to our households in the name of Jesus. And bring us again tomorrow to learn more in the Sunday school teaching. And prepare us for the tomorrow night service so we can experience your glory visiting our lives. We pray, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. We have finished. One more service to God's glory. If somehow... The Lord has spoken to you during the service and listening to the gifts if you have any doubts, any questions. So give us a signal and we're going to pray with you. We're going to give you the assistance that you need. We will have a meeting uh, that will be like a visit right after the service and we're going to glorify the Lord with the youth for the, the, the work that we have performed in his name. To you all, peace of the Lord.